Hi guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about how are things transported in cells? What is diffusion? And then how does diffusion work across cell membranes? And finally, a summary. Substances need to be transported across cell membranes. This is because cells need to take in useful stuff and also get rid of waste products. These substances can be transported in and out of cells through diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. What determines whether the substance moves through diffusion, osmosis, or active transport depends on what the substance is. So now let's look at some substance that a cell might need to take in. So for instance, a cell might need to take in oxygen and glucose. A cell might need to get rid of a waste product, such as carbon dioxide. As I said before, these processes move things through the cell membrane. And the cell membrane is useful as it holds the cell together and control what goes into the cell and what goes out of the cell. So first of all, we're going to look at the process of diffusion. But what is diffusion? Well, the definition of diffusion is given as the spreading out of the particles of any substance in solution or particles of a gas, resulting in a net movement from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. So this all might sound a little bit complicated, but don't worry, diffusion is actually quite simple and I explain these different terms in this video. So a simple way of explaining what diffusion is, is that it's a term for particles spreading out from one area to another. So these particles here can spread out to different areas. Specifically, the particles move from an area of higher concentration to an area of low concentration. Basically, this means that the particles move from an area where there's lots of it around to an area where there's not many particles of its kind. You can smell perfumes because particles diffuse from an area of high concentration after you spray it near the perfume bottle and diffuse out to areas of lower concentration. And these include areas near your nose where there are fewer perfume particles around. And this is what allows you to smell the perfume. So moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration is called moving down a concentration gradient. You can think of this as moving down a ladder from a high concentration to a lower concentration. So the concentration gradient is just a simpler way or shorter way of saying the same thing. It's really important you remember this term for your exams. So diffusion can actually happen in gases and solutions. This is because the particles in gases and solutions are able to move around freely. So let's look at an example of diffusion in solution. So if you put a drop of ink in solution, the particles of ink spread out in the solution. Eventually, the drop of ink will have diffused evenly around the solution, changing the colour of the solution to the colour of the ink. We know that diffusion can also occur in gases, as we saw in the perfume example before. The one important thing to remember about diffusion is that it doesn't require any energy. It's passive. Other processes that transport substances may require energy, but we'll meet them later on. Well, now we know the mechanism of diffusion, but why is diffusion biologically relevant? Well, diffusion can work across cell membranes, but how does it do this? Well, the cell membranes allow the diffusion of substances in and out. So substances that the cell needs can diffuse in, and substances it doesn't need can diffuse out. However, this diagram I've shown here isn't completely accurate. This is because the cell membranes have small holes in them. This makes them partially permeable. These small holes allow substances to go into and out of the cell membrane. However, a really important thing to note, the cell membranes are called partially permeable. This is because cell membranes only let some things through. You can think of this as a bit like a sieve. The sieve lets larger molecules stay in the sieve, but lets smaller molecules through. So this means that small molecules like water and amino acids can go through, but not larger molecules like proteins and starch. So water molecules can go through because they're small, but larger molecules like starch can't. Particles such as glucose move from a high concentration to a low concentration, and this is through the small holes in the membrane. So here the glucose is at high concentration, and here the glucose is at lower concentration. You can see that there's less glucose particles around. Through diffusion, the glucose particles move from a high concentration to a low concentration, and this is down the concentration gradient. 
It's also important to remember that the movement of particles is random, so the particles go both ways. What's important and what we care about is the overall or net movement of particles. So some particles may move against the concentration gradient. However, we can see through the longer arrow that more particles move from a high concentration to a low concentration. So the overall net movement is from a high to a low concentration. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.